Hola amigos. I'm obsessed with sleep, like really obsessed. Because as a light sleeper who's traveling to new places every single day, it's either that or turn into a sleep deprived zombie. And I'm also a doctor who does shift work. Today I'm sharing nine sleep tools that keep me sane. From the basics to the weird ones that you wouldn't expect. Let's dive in. So my obsession with sleep started in medical school. I think because we were learning about how important sleep is for everything in life, for your mood, your performance, and just how you experience your day-to-day -day reality. And I actually did a student selected component where I kind of specialized in a sleep interest for a month. And I think that with my personal experience of being quite a poor sleeper throughout my life, just made me really dive into all the ways that you can improve your sleep. And because this year I'm traveling, I'm moving from hostel to hostel or hotel every few days, it means my sleep hasn't been great and it's been particularly challenging. In addition to this, I spent many years working as a doctor, doing shift work, doing night shifts, doing evening shifts, where your sleep cycle is just constantly changing. So I've had to find ways to adapt to that lifestyle and not let it take a serious toll on my health, both physical and mental. So this video is for the travelers, it's for the health enthusiasts, and it's for the shift workers. And I sincerely hope some of these tools can help you too. Okay, numero uno. I know it's basic, but it's the bog standard eye mask. But this has actually become a non-negotiable for me. And in fact, I actually have three <laughs> to travel with. Mainly because when you're washing one, you're waiting for the other to dry, you kind of want to keep them clean, you just cycle through them. So three is the minimum that I need. And I can't stress enough how I couldn't live without one of these. I think I started using them again in medical school where the lights were just shining through my curtains. And for most people, even a slither of light will disturb their sleep quality. So if you're one of those people who tend to go to bed late and wake up later, and you tend to wake up after the sun has risen, you really need to invest in something that will re remove the lights. Whilst you're traveling, an eye mask will have to do. When I was back at home, I had a full blackout blind setup, which I'd say is even better than an eye mask but I know that's not available to everyone. Some people can't get over the kind of discomfort of having something on your face, but I encourage you to just keep wearing it and keep wearing it until we get used to it. And then in fact, you become so used to it that you almost rely on it to fall asleep. I used to do this stupid thing where I'd go to bed without a sleep mask, the sun would wake me up in the morning and then I'd put it on and then it would take me a while to fall back asleep again. What I do now is I just put the sleep mask before I go to sleep and then I just keep it on all night. So then the sun doesn't wake me up in the morning. And recently I upgraded to something a little bit more fancy, which is a sleep mask, but it has headphones built into the side so you can listen to audiobooks, podcasts, or my personal favorite, white noise sounds. This is the fancier cousin of the bog standard sleep mask, and it has got a bit of a hefty price tag. I wouldn't say this is non-negotiable. If you can't afford something like this, just stick with your simple sleep mask. And in fact, there are some cons with this expensive sleep mask which I did a full video about this topic here. And I do have an affiliate link for this Manta Sleep Mask sound, which I'll leave all in the description if you're interested in that. Now for my next trick. Enter sleep plugs. Now earplugs have always been a bit hit or miss for me. I like them, but I feel like they don't drain out all the sound and I still can't get used to having something in my ear when I'm sleeping. They just kind of feel uncomfortable. And in fact, with these earplugs, what I've done is I've actually chop the top off because my ears are quite small and they end up sticking out so I can't really lie on my side. I kind of use these here and then, not every single night. I know some people love them but for me personally, hit or miss. The problem with using these regularly is that it actually blocks your ear canal so you can't drain the wax overnight. Usually when you're sleeping some wax will just fall out of your ear naturally whereas with these you're actually forcing wax back in and I've had problems with wax build up by using earplugs every day. And this is why sometimes I use the next sleep hack which is my Bose noise reduction headphones. Now I know these all seem pretty basic so far, but trust me, it's gonna get more and more interesting towards the end of the video, and I'll save the best for last. These are like an upgraded version of your basic earplugs. I find them a lot more comfortable, and not only do they reduce noise from the surroundings just with their inbuilt technology, but you can use it to play podcasts, play audiobooks, or play white noise. And I, f I find playing some noise in addition to the noise reduction just helps me sleep like a baby. But the only problem with these is that they're so freaking bulky that I cannot sleep on my side. And I love sleeping on my side. I can only ever really sleep flat on my back 
because as soon as I put some pressure on the side, it's super uncomfortable. If I could sleep on my side, I would wear these all the time, but unfortunately not. But there have been many of the time that these have completely saved my life, particularly when we're at a camping festival and there's just music playing all night. I'd like to go to bed early these days. If you're at a festival, your bass is going. So even if I have to sleep on my back, these are still much better than enduring some drunk person singing or vomiting next to my tent at 2 a.m. But I have found something which has allowed me to experience this noise reduction without having some bulky thing on my head. Now I'm really excited to show you this next one because this one's a bit out there and I don't think you would have heard of it before. Introducing the white noise machine. Now I've only very recently discovered this and I wish I discovered it sooner. I also wish I had an affiliate link for this because it's become one of my favorite sleep things, but I don't. I just got it off Amazon for like 20 quid or something. And what it is is a white noise machine, which is a little speaker which plays white noise. It's very simple to use. It's got a few buttons on the bottom uh, to turn on, change the volume and change the sound that you want. So I don't know if you can hear that. That's one of my favorite white noises at the moment. But it's got a lot, a lot of other white noise sounds. This one's a bit too aggressive. And you can just cycle through them. I think there's about 20 different sounds. Some crickets, if you like sleeping to crickets. Some running water, but that always makes me need to pee. Rain sounds, always nice. Fire crackling. Some nice lullabies for babies. More lullabies. A woman shushing which, yeah, I guess it's quite soothing as well. And I'm gonna be honest, this is actually marketed towards babies to just leave it in their cot or their pram to help them sleep. I would say this makes me sleep like a baby. This is like a small travel version. Uh, battery lasts like 20 hours and it's super light. But I think when I get back home, I'm gonna invest in some bigger white noise machines just to leave by my bed all the time. They're so good at drowning out background noise like traffic, my fiance's incessant snoring, which she'll deny or just any hostel or hotel background noise. And because it's in a speaker format, I don't need to have some bulky things in my ears, I just leave it right next to my head. And it essentially does the same thing as wearing noise reduction headphones or the, that fancy sleep mask which has the noise reduction built in. Super cheap, super affordable, and yeah, one of my new favorites. Okay, we're getting through these hacks. Now for the kind of weird and wonderful. You're probably wondering, is this guy going to a festival? No, he's just going to sleep. These are blue light blocking glasses. I put these on about two hours before bed. I made a whole video about why this is important and it's all to do with your melatonin. Chris from last week, can you explain to the viewers why you use these? Blue light messes with your melatonin. Basically it tells your brain, hey, it's daytime, it's time to party. And your sleep hormones like, nah, not tonight. Blue light from screens is basically like the light that you get in the sun, in the sky, especially in the 460 to 480 nanometers wavelength and it disrupts your circadian rhythm by suppressing the melatonin secretion. It's like telling your brain, hey the sun's still out, don't secrete any melatonin, it's not time to sleep. These are a game changer particularly in the bright hostels where you can't control the lighting yourself and all you're provided with is these horrible bright fluorescent lights which just keep you awake all night. I do have affiliate links for these, see the description below and like I said it's all to do with melatonin which leads me on nicely to the next thing melatonin supplements. Now, quick disclaimer, in a lot of countries, these are prescription only and you can't access melatonin unless prescribed to you by a doctor. Personally, I only use melatonin when I really, really have to. Kind of like a breaking case of emergency thing. And there was a point in time, particularly when I was doing a lot of shift work, where I became heavily reliant on melatonin supplements. And I was basically taking them every single day, not even when I was just doing night shifts, but when I was just doing normal day shifts as well. It almost become an addiction, not that you can become physically addicted to melatonin, but more habitually. And to be honest, that kind of long-term use is questionable in how safe it is. Definitely in the short term, it it's unlikely to cause any issues, but if you're using it for many years, many months, there have been some studies which have inferred that it can affect some of your sex hormone levels. Now, some people absolutely need to take melatonin every single day, particularly if they've got any sleep onset disorders. I know a lot of autistic children need to take melatonin. So if it's been prescribed by your doctor, continue to take it as normal. But for me, I just use them when I really need it. For example, if I'm jet lagged and I want to reset my circadian rhythm, or if I just know I'm going to have a really bad night's sleep. At the moment, I probably only take them once a month maximum. 
because I do find they make me feel a bit groggy the next day. And often I'd rather just feel a little bit sleep deprived than that groggy feeling that the melatonin supplements give me. And I have found some things which I prefer to use if I can't sleep and they don't involve taking any supplements. Time to get into the more woo-woo side of things. So one thing that I've started implementing in the past year or so, thank you to my man Huberman, is these non-sleep deep rest or yoga nidra protocols. And essentially these are just like guided meditations to help you sleep, but there's actually a lot of good evidence for it. And it's not as woo-woo as it sounds. If I'm struggling to fall asleep, or I've woken up in the middle of the night and I literally just can't fall back asleep because my mind's racing. I'll reach for the waking up app and just play one of the guided meditations. They're not like your usual meditations where you're sitting upright, you're focusing on the breath. It's more about defocusing. So you're lying on your back, you're doing body scans, you're slowing down your breathing, and this all helps you relax you further and further. And there's actually really good evidence for these protocols to help you sleep. And it's also been shown that even if you can't fall asleep using these methods, you still get some benefit from just doing them and resting your mind in these states. It's not as good as sleep, but it's the next best thing essentially. I found them particularly useful for when I want to nap in the afternoon. I'll just pop on my headphones, listen to a 10 to 20 minute NSDR, and I find I'm either asleep or I feel well rested afterwards. If sleep still isn't happening, I've discovered another thing which is helping me immensely. Now, we've all been there, we're lying in bed, our thoughts are racing, and we just can't seem to settle our mind into sleep. One really cool thing another traveler introduced to me is something called automatic writing. Now, it's not used for the intention of sleep, but I found that it's been very useful for me. What automatic writing is, is essentially just getting a piece of paper, getting a pen or pencil, and just writing every single thing that comes to mind. Basically you set a timer and you just start writing and you apply no filter to what you write. Whatever comes to mind, you just write it. And I find it super effective for dealing with those racing thoughts. It's kind of like letting the thoughts out of your brain onto a piece of paper so they don't keep parting on in your head at 3 a.m. And I've actually found it really useful for the creative process as well. So I often find I have a lot of ideas and things that I wanna do. And by just getting it all out, it helps me structure those ideas and actually see what I'm thinking. In addition to the automatic writing, I've started doing something else called automatic speaking, which is exactly what it says on the tin. It's the same thing, but instead of writing things out, you're speaking it out. So I just open the voice notes app on my phone and just start recording and just keep talking and talking and talking, not taking a single break in what I'm saying. And it just serves the same purpose of getting all these thoughts in my head out into the world and out of my brain and into something else. Once I've done that for about 10, 20 minutes, I find that helps me really just relax and go into a nice sleepy state. So I've given you a lot of tools here. I hope you find them helpful, but I guess you're wondering which are my favorite? Now I have two that I was struggling to choose from but they're the most simple and they're the cheapest, so they should be accessible to everyone. The two I'm gonna choose are the Simple Sleep Mask and actually the White Noise Machine. This has been the real game changer, which I was quite surprised about. If you have more tools for me to try, please let me know in the comments. I'm open to try anything. Remember, I do have some affiliate links for two of the tools, which is the Bond Charge Blue Light Blocking Glasses and the Manta Sleep Mask Sound. If you're interested in buying those, use the affiliate link. It just helps a small creator make more videos like these. And I really appreciate you doing so. Okay, it's time for me to leave this noisy hostel and go do something fun. I'll see you next week. Keep training, keep living, peace.